Number 48, determine the molarity of each of the following solutions. And then we have letter D. So in this case, they told us that we have 2.76 kilograms of copper 2 sulfate, CuSO4, and then pentahydrate, or pentahydrate. And this is all in 1.45 liters of solution. Okay, we want to find out the molarity. Uh, they gave us a unit of quantity and a volume. So what's the formula for molarity? Bam! <laughs> this right here, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this over here. Perfect. Okay, now, molarity equals the moles of the solute divided by the liters of the total solution. More simply, we usually know it as molarity, capital M, equals moles divided by liters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write that over here. Okay. So in order for us to find the molarity, I need two things, right? I need to know the amount of moles, and then I'm just going to take that and divide by the amount of liters. Did they give us any of those numbers? Mm, no, I don't see any mole value here, right? I see a kilogram, kg, but not really a mole. But I do see a liter. So they did give me the bottom. They did tell us that it's in 1.45 liters. So I use this number. I don't use it again. So the next thing that I have to do is I have to work on this value and convert it into moles. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to take my 2.76 kilograms of CuSO4 and five hydrates, five waters, right? Make sure that if this is in the compound, it has to stay there, okay? And I have to convert this all into moles of the CuSO4 and then the pentahydrate. Hmm, how do I do that? Well, how do I go from a kilogram to a mole? Can I do this in one shot? No, I can't. What I have to do first is I have to use my my tricks down here, right? And see if I can get it into a more simpler uh, unit. Well, down here, I can go from a kilogram to a gram, right? Because then look over here, guys, I could go from grams to moles. So this is like a two-stepper. I first have to convert kilogram into gram of CuSO4 and then pentahydrate. And then from there, I can go from grams to moles. So let's start it off. How would I convert from kilograms to grams? Well, if I'm starting at kilogram and I want to go to grams, I'm going this way. That's this little conversion. I just take that number and times by 1,000. So I'm going to take my 2.76 and times it by 1,000. However, you could either do that or just take your decimal and move it to the left three times and fill in your zeros. So either way, you're going to get 2,760 grams. Okay, so that's the total amount of grams that I have now. Now I just need to take that and go to moles. How do I do that? Well, now here's the conversion, right? It's a quick conversion because we don't want to do dimensional analysis. We're not, we're not in that unit anymore, so we can do some other ways. Unless your teacher or professor says you have to do it that way. Then you have to do it the dimensional analysis way. But in this case, eh, I don't care. <laughs> so we have grams, and we're going to moles. What do I have to do? Well, I have to check my gram value, and I divide it by the molecular weight, MW molecular weight. So I need to take this number, the 2,760, and that's grams, right? And divide it by the molecular weight of the compound that was given. But they didn't tell us what the molecular weight of the compound that was given, right? The, the molecular weight of CuSO4, 5H2Os. But we've done tons of problems in which we've figured out a compound's molecular weight, right? We go to the periodic table and we just add up the weights for each individual element. Now, if there's a hydrate, you have to include those as well. But just make sure, right? There's four oxygens here, 
and five oxygens here. So you actually have a total of nine oxygens in this whole compound, and you have a total of 10 hydrogens, right? So just make sure. Now let's do a quick little exercise. I'll get the molecular weight, you get the molecular weight, and let's see if our numbers match up. They might not match up exactly. I'm gonna use the exact numbers on the periodic table, um, but it should come pretty close. Okay, so copper, I have one of those, so 63.55. I have a sulfur, I have only one of those. Okay, and then, like we just said, there's nine oxygens, so nine times 16. And then we have a total of 10 hydrogens. So I do it by that weight. And I get roughly 249.69, and that's gram per mole. That's the number that you're going to divide by here. So I'm going to divide by 249.69, if I wanted to use the units, right? And the grams cancel out. That's why this this works, and you're just left with the mole unit. So that's why grams divided by molecular weight equals moles. So now let's just do that math. 2760 divided by 249.69. Um, I get roughly, let's see, I'll do 11.05. And actually, we started off with three sig figs, so I should have three sig figs. So technically this would be 11.1 .1, and that's moles of CuSO4 pentahydrate 5H2Os. Now I finally have this number. We did all that work to get to the moles. So this would be 11.1 .1 moles. Now I can finally solve for molarity. Molarity equals the moles that I just found, 11.1 .1, divided by the 1.45 liters that they gave us. So what do we get? 11.1 .1 divided by 1.45, 7.66 units. Molarity can either be seen as a capital M or since these units do not cancel out, it would literally just stay mole per liter. Either uh, unit is acceptable for a molarity. And this guy, I mean, it's a high number. It's almost eight molarity. That's, that's pretty concentrated. That means that you have a lot of solute in your solution. The higher the molarity, the higher the amount of solute uh, in your total solution. All right. So guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully this helped. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Uh, just let us, you know, it just lets us know that we're doing our job right. If you have uh, other classes, we might be doing those questions for you as well. We have math questions up on our channel and physics, if you guys are in that class. Um, but yeah, other than that, I hope you have a great, great, great day. Keep studying hard and let's crush those exams, all right? I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.